Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you uh, the fragrances that I wore during the week and especially want to talk about this one that <laughs> it's weird. Like it was a weird fragrance, but I, I kind of liked it. I, I had an interesting encounter with it, so I thought I'd share that with you. But before we get started, first, I want to say thank you to all my new subscribers that have come over uh, since watching my crazy, like, poke fun at the fragrance community video. Thank you to all of you, for those of you that commented. You know, I put the video out, I was a little bit nervous. I'm so glad you guys liked it, but beyond that, it was a tough week. A tough week on many levels, globally. It was a tough week for my, me personally, just life, right? Uh, but reading your comments just made me feel so happy and so encouraged and there will be a part two coming at some point. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to just go ahead and hit that button, join the weird, wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community and without further ado, let's get into this. The first fragrance of the week was Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. Now this one, I've talked about it a lot, but honestly, I haven't worn it too much. So it's one of my favorites, but one of the problems that I run into when, you know, when you start getting a larger collection is that um, you just don't reach for things like I'm always wanting to rotate. And so I hadn't worn this one in so long and I was actually going to church and it was the first time, honestly, we'd been to church in a while. Um, and so I was like, okay, I want to put this on. I want to smell sophisticated and like fancy so I put on my Coco Mademoiselle I put on I think two sprays well the projection on this fragrance is phenomenal I smelled amazing my husband even complimented me which was a total shock he could smell it um, it smells classy but it's not overbearing in any way um, yeah this is this is again such a love for me so i'm so glad i wore it it made me feel kind of like spring was coming uh i felt classy and sophisticated and yes highly recommend this one i just thoroughly enjoyed wearing it the next fragrance that i wore was Encelance edt by guerlain now this is the old packaging the new packaging is so much nicer my guess is the formulation has slightly shifted as well um, I really want to try the Eau de Parfum, but this one, I was like, oh, I'm not crazy about it. First of all, the bottle kind of looks like some sort of spacey, weird, it, you know, it does nothing for me. Uh, but then the fragrance, uh, in the past, I'm like, Ugh, it's just not for me. It's just too powdery. Uh, it's too like mature, like what I would think of as just old fashioned. Uh, so I wasn't into it and this was like super hyped up in the fancier bottle, super hyped up last year. Like everyone was like, this is a fairy princess fragrance and this is the best thing ever. Actually, my friend bought this one and she didn't like it. So she passed it on to me. This comes across as very powdery, slightly sweet. Um, but for whatever reason, I really enjoyed wearing this one. So I'd worn it once before and just thought, Ugh, I don't like it at all. But um, in sniffing it recently, because I was going to declutter it, I'm like, there's something, there's something I'm gravitating towards this now. You know, as our, as we like kind of grow and smell things, uh, I think our nose starts to change and develop what we kind of didn't like before, we may like now and vice versa. So for whatever reason, I was a little bit intrigued by this one. I actually enjoyed wearing it during the day. Um, so I'm going to keep giving it a try. To me, it felt kind of springy. It also felt sort of comforting. So I will keep you updated on this one, but I actually really enjoyed wearing it. Next one that I wore during the week was Valentino's Donna Born in Roma. Now this one I have a love-hate relationship with. My sister was over, oh see, like when I smell it off the cap, it's just intoxicatingly awesome. Like it's got black currant, I think. Um, it just smells sweet and delicious, like really kind of addictive. Um, so on the cap, I love it. Um, my sister sprayed it on, like she came over and sprayed it on. I smelt that delicious kind of curranty vibe from it. I smelt the bourbon vanilla and I just thought it smelled so delicious. Uh, but I wore it this week and I basically drenched myself in it. Like I really 
went to town because I thought, okay, I really want to smell, smell this during the week. So like I, I oversprayed it and probably everybody that I was around was horrified, but um, oversprayed, put it on my clothing uh, and I definitely smelt it all day. So it lasted me at least eight hours. Um, I could smell it on my skin, I guess, but I'd also sprayed my clothing. So it definitely lasted. Uh, I liked this one from the perspective that, you know, you got that nice fruitiness and then as it dries down, it becomes more of that bourbon vanilla. Uh, I'm more excited about the opening of this fragrance than I am the mid and the end. So to me, there's a slight woodiness in this fragrance plus that bourbon vanilla. Um, it's nice, but I still like, so I smell it now and I'm like, oh, this is so amazing. But when I wear it, it doesn't really, like it's it's just nice. It's not, it's nothing exciting to me. So <laughs> probably by the time I decide whether I like this one, I'll have used it up because I used a good chunk of it uh, the other day just so that I'd really be able to immerse myself in it. So we'll see the jury's still out on this one. So I tried Sub Sweet Tobacco Spirits, I think it's called, by 18.21. Um, I liked it. It was really, really quite strong. Like, so it's potent. It has that boozy tobacco vibe to it. Definitely unisex. Kind of reminded me of Angel Share. Like I've got the dupe of it, uh, Angelic Elix Elixir by Dua. And like they're not exact, but there there is some sort of quality to it that reminds me of that. So anyway, this one was interesting. Gonna try it a few more times. The longevity was really decent on this. Like I got about uh, six, seven hours out of this one. So uh, super decent. Now another kind of more vanillic scent that I put on was Sultan Noir by Pascal Morbido. Now I have raved about this one. It was 36 bucks, so the price is great. It smells amazing. Now, um, I went and visited my friend uh, from Deep Green Beauty recently. She took one sniff of this and went, no. <laughs> she didn't like it at all. So it is very smoky, very leather-centric, uh, but for some reason I really enjoy it. That said, I did not enjoy wearing it this week. So I put it on. I think part of it was that I was kind of in a down mood. Like I was fairly upset this week. So putting this one on, like I find if I wear really happy fragrances, it really helps my mood. So this one was more sultry and seductive. And um, I didn't enjoy wearing it as much but I still really love the fragrance. I think part of my problem, I am attracted to all these like sultry, sexy fragrances. There's a certain persona that comes with wearing like the unisex, sultry, sexy fragrances. And I, I want to love wearing them because I'm attracted to that. And part of me wishes I was this sultry, sexy chick, like, you know, like, I don't know, smoldering and mysterious. Like, that's what I, I, you know, we all have our things. And I always wished that I was like, really like, kind of mysterious and dark hair, olive skin, exotic. I kind of wish that I was that chick, but the reality is, is that I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm just not that person. I'm a little too quirky and weird for sultry, seductive, and mysterious. So as much as this is gorgeous, I love it. I love sniffing it. I love wearing it on occasion, uh, but I've got to be in the right mood for fragrances like this. So this didn't do it for me this week, even though I really like it one more before I move on to my weird fragrance and that is So Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now this, this is more of a me fragrance. It's raspberry tuberose. It smells a bit like Lanterdi. Uh, there's a grapey quality to this. It's cheery, it's uplifting, and I just love wearing this one. This one makes me feel happy. And I think that's part of it. Honestly, I want to wear perfumes that make me feel happy right now because life's a little bit like not so easy at times. So this one was a total winner. I just, I just instantly felt my mood boosted by this one. Now my weird fragrance of the week, it is seriously the weirdest fragrance I have 
ever tried and it's thanks to Yulia Rosensiflix.ca. I feel so bad because everything she said, I'm so grateful because I want to sniff these ones and I still like Chocolate Greedy Coffee Addict. I'm going to for sure like use them because I, I really enjoy them. I just don't know if I want a full battle. But the fascinating fragrance that she sent me and it is a total like nothing I've ever smelt before. And it's called Ganymede by Marc Antoine Barreau. Now this fragrance, like seriously, it's otherworldly bizarre. Like that's the only way I could describe it. Like I've never smelt anything like it. So I went to, I, I didn't even really know how to describe it. I went to Fragrantica and um, yeah, the notes are interesting. It has minerals, violet leaf, Italian Mandarin, Immortelle, Suede, Saffron, Chinese Osmanthus, and Aki Gallowood. The only thing that I may smell besides the minerals uh, would be um, a little bit of that orange way, way, way in the dry down. So um, I'm like, this is this is the most unique fragrance I'd ever smelled. And so I looked on the the list of descriptions like people's reviews on Fragrantica and people were saying it's otherworldly it smells like a sterile operating room a spaceship like it smells like the ether like space itself and it really is like I'm so excited to, to smell this because it is literally <laughs> totally weird like that, like so so I put it on in the evening and then I went to bed and I take CBD oil. Now I take this the full spectrum CBD oil so there's like a smidge of THC in there but it just helps me relax for bedtime, helps me sleep better. So um, I've been trying that for a couple of months now and so what I do find is it puts me in this really quite relaxed state once I get into bed. So I'm smelling my my hand and I'm like, what is that? What is that? And while my eyes are closed, the first image that comes to mind is the inside of a new sneaker. So uh, specifically the lining of the sneaker, like the insole, somehow I was getting that vibe. And then I'm sit laying there in bed and I'm sniffing away and I'm like, huh, this is quite good. Like, it's actually kind of a little bit sexy. Like, uh, like I was thinking, if my husband wore this, like, you know, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be really, really enjoying his presence if he had this one on. Like, it's just kind of an interesting, slightly sexy fragrance. And uh, for me, it was definitely more masculine than feminine. So I don't know if I would want to wear this one. But at the same time, I could see wearing this maybe as a base for something else just to kind of make it different like because it's so fascinating so then I'm like smelling it and I'm I all of a sudden get this whole entire like vibe of being in um some sort of like futuristic airplane that's really new it smells very sanitary or like airport like so really clean and um yeah like clean vinyl upholstery that kind of thing but the the stewardess she's got this really interesting outfit on and you know latex pants i think it's latex you know like what bat woman would wear you know that latex bodysuit well i imagine her in like she's got like the typical stewardess like and it was such a vivid imagining it was so bizarre this this uh like <laughs> like the like neck scarf that they wear with the the blouse and everything the little tiny pillbox hat let's say maybe it was latex too but the skirt was like this a-line skirt that was kind of spacey uh latex and it just kind of stayed very stiff and that was the picture i got like the color orange being like a prominent thing in the kind of idea so this is the most unique fragrance I've ever smelt. I can't say, like, it's not like smelling something and going, ah, oh. but there's something really slightly addictive about this one and just fascinating. Now, unfortunately, um, from my weird meanderings just before bed, I actually had a 
nightmare on top of it. So like this was this was a weird one. Now I know lots of people love this one. In fact, I, I had texted my new friend Hesse and she had had this one on the that week. So it's definitely a popular one. Uh, lots of people are interested in it. It's very, very different. You gotta try a sample of it just to experience the weirdness of it. Uh, but I can see pairing this with something. I can also see like, like getting a whiff of it on the air, like not sticking your nose into it, but getting a whiff of it. It just smells kind of clean uh, and just intriguing. So one of the most fascinating fragrances I've ever smelt. Uh, not sure again that I'd want to buy it, uh, but I'm so excited that I got to smell something so different, like different. And that is it. Those are my favorite fragrances. And please go check out Yulia at scentsiblings.ca. She is wonderful. I love her. She's such a sweet, generous, kind person. Uh, she has, uh, she does what she calls entertaining videos. So she just kind of chit chats away. And uh, yeah, she's got quite a sense of humor and I just really appreciate her. So please go check out her channel. All the channels, all the fragrances are linked down below. And yeah, what was your standout fragrance? I would say my standouts for the week were definitely Coco Mademoiselle and So Scandal because it put me in such a good mood. Uh, yeah, so such a happy, juicy fragrance. And then this one is just, it's iconically beautiful. Uh, so classy. It's phenomenal. So those were my standouts. What was your standout for the week? I would love to know. And other than that, have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.